Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? It is February the 2nd, 2013. This is episode number 94 of Timberwolves Explosion. I am your host, Paladino Joey. And with me, once again, Marcus the Forecaster is in the house. (laughs) Yes, sir. He's back. And we're back. We're ready to rock and roll. Timberwolves Explosion is available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. Thank you always for downloading and listening to this show. Oh, so very much. Yes, siree. So now we're going to jump straight into the Timberwolves. Uh, well, it's been a rough week, unfortunately. Until tonight was an uh, explosion of Timberwolves basketball. Yeah, they, they, they've been listening to our show, I think, or something. Somebody has been. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but uh, earlier this week, uh, well, generally we're going to get into the Wolves news. Then, of course, we'll get into our routines of uh, the brief game reviews. Two things that we like, two things we dislike. We'll hand out our weekly awards and demerits. And then we'll get into NBA League talk. Yes, sir. Of course, we'll get to the Facebook and Twitter before we get to break here. Wolves news, Facebook and Twitter, get to break, and there we go. Rick Edelman's back. Aren't you happy? Yeah, um, <laughs> except for the fact that uh, Chris Johnson didn't get any uh, playing time. Yeah, that's the big thing. That's the big thing that's been going on. That's the big part of the show here and the first topic. Yeah, Rick Edelman's back. But there's a lot of people getting annoyed here about CJ, as you like to call him. Chris Johnson, both of them have been re-signed to 10-day contracts, by the way, um, which is nice for the time being. Both CJ and uh, Jelly Bell. I can't say his name right. Jelly Belly. I don't know. Michael Gabaldi? No. It's actually Mikhail Jellabel. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> His feet must be jelly because he doesn't move very fast, does he? No, he doesn't. Mm-mm. The guy that does move fast and has a lot of athleticism is your guy and my guy, Chris Johnson. Yeah. Your guy even more so. And yeah, what's up with yeah, that? I like him. Yeah, I don't see any reason for him uh, not to be playing. What's going on? I remember that was like, oh, Marcus, look, look, look who's coming in. It's not Chris Johnson, it's yeah. Lou Amundsen. What? Yeah. Steam's about extended playing time. Pekovic never dunks it, as Rubio would say, dunk it. <laughs> Why doesn't Pekovic dunk? Mm. He should. There's no reason. Though. Last season he was dunking. Yeah, he doesn't dunk at all, like ever. Like, Ali you pass, he catches and lays it in. What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm a little tired of the uh, of the layups. Yeah, what's going on? Because they, they don't go in all the time. That's the biggest problem. Dunks generally go in, like 90%, 99%. What about the layups? <laughs> not for pick. Sometimes they go in. Huh? Yeah, most of the time, yeah. But they're not that. Yeah, I mean, it's why doesn't he dunk the ball more? Yeah. They try to lay it in. Dunk it! No. <laughs> Inside tracks, yeah. I mean, we've been, uh, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, we've been, Timberwolves have been getting a lot of national TV recognition lately. A lot of people wanted to see the Love and Rubio combination when they made these schedules. Oh, yeah. Man, what a bummer. But, I mean, at least we look better tonight than last night. We'll get to those pretty pretty briefly here. Uh, Peck and Schved are back. That's nice. I mean, last week, jeez, I mean, we didn't have anybody, you know. That's why we signed Chris Johnson and Jelly Bell in the first place, and both of them looked okay. Chris Johnson was getting MVP chance. Yeah. And deservedly so. MVP of the Timberwolves, not of the league, that night. <laughs> that was pretty funky, wasn't it? Jelly Bell, no. Yeah, yeah. by the way, the um, the game that uh, Chris Johnson did get any minutes in was the uh, the Clippers game. Yeah, that was the yep, that was the first game. Yep, that was the first game of this next week here. Um, and actually, yeah. uh, he didn't get much burn. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I wasn't able Laker to uh, game, watch. Either. Yeah, I wasn't able to watch the whole game. Uh, yeah, both of us kind of missed parts of the game just because of scheduling and such. And unfortunately, it's just how it goes. But we we needed to see, and uh, yeah, the the later one in general, that's uh, good stuff. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're having fun looking at the schedule here. No, <laughs> it's been a good. Uh, well, yeah, we'll get to the prediction stuff much later. That's later on. But uh, really, Chris Johnson though. Definitely more deserved of the lack of playing time he's getting. A lot of us not 
I mean, some people were saying Fire Adelman. It was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Some some uh, fans were saying that. <laughs> I also, yeah, weren't, 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 they weren't uh, really happy with his uh, rotations. No, no, that was getting kind of weird. And the fun part too, I remember the uh, when you're gonna we were watching the replay of the Clipper game, and they're showing Rick Adelman at the beginning, and you just say, "Look at him." Oh yeah, he was he was pretty <laughs> mad. <laughs> you were saying, "Look at him," because well, yeah, because you were mad at Adelman, weren't you? Because yeah. Chris Johnson did not yeah. play. He did not play in the Clipper game at all. And then, yeah, that was another game that was just like... Ugh. Yeah, because Adamant, I mean, was he not watching the games like we were? Yeah, you would think he was. I thought he was, but I'm still yeah, I'm not sure about that. So now, uh, really... Looks like you have some... Yeah, uh, yeah, Chris Johnson is perfect tonight, by the way. Three of three from the floor. That's <laughs> pointing out here. Mr. Forecaster is doing his, his point in yeah. Yes. His a lot of fouls, but um, <laughs> in the whole game, oh yeah, god, yeah, fouls, yeah, what the heck? Yeah, that was pretty fast. Whoa, okay, that was just the eight little minutes he played at the end of the game. Eight yeah. and five got five fouls. Well, that time uh, Anthony Davis was pretty aggressive. Yeah, finally, man, the guy finally. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Anthony Davis. Some a lot of listeners might be like, "Why?" Well, because he's not that great. That's why, <laughs> in in my opinion. He'll be okay, but I think he's a complimentary star, not a star yeah. in this league. That's, yeah. You know, it, right now, I think he's, uh, at first I thought he might be another Dwight, but it just seems like he might be just a, uh, an Ibaka who can just shoot better. I think that's closer, yeah. He's closer to an Ibaka than to, yeah. and by the way, we're talking about the Dwight that was healthy and 100% and yeah. playing really well, not, not the Lakers Dwight, <laughs> not this shell, you know. That's basically what we've been seeing right now. Wow, looks like Sacramento got within 39 tonight. I thought they were going to lose by 50. <laughs> I just saw that look at you. <laughs> they were losing yeah. by 50 at one point tonight. That was pretty funny. Well, they got within, they got within 39. Hey. Yeah, we know the team was getting uh, crushed. Usually uh, tries to inch back towards the end. Yeah, just uh, for a semi-save face. Look at us yeah. bouncing around this random stuff. No, I'm just kidding. DeMarcus Cousins, big game. Huh? What's that? Okay. Holy mother of Moses. 41 points by the Knicks in the third quarter. 41. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. 41. <laughs> let me guess, let me guess. NBA Jam? No, he didn't even have that good of a game, at least to the point. What? Okay, the Knicks won by that many, and Carmelo got nine points. Uh. Bump, bump, ba na 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 What? Okay. I guess it's just one of those games. Well, obviously, the one thing about blowouts, sometimes you just take people out because it's like, what's the point? You don't need people... Sprain in their ankle, you know. It was close in the first quarter, and then it just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Knicks won by like 50 points in the next couple <laughs> of quarters there. Golly. Oh, that's pretty bad. It was 72 to 30. 72 to 30 was the score if you combine the second and third quarters of the Knicks and Sacramento Kings. 72 to 30. Ah, yeah, that's bad. Um, yeah, but how about them Seattle Sonics? Okay, anyhow. So yeah, we'll yeah, be they're coming. Yeah, they're coming definitely. So now to, uh, we shall move on to the next topic. Yes, sir. Brandon Roy. Who is that again? I've never heard of Brandon Roy. Okay, I'm just. Is that name of an uh, injury curse? <laughs> yeah, name of a Portland, a former Portland Trailblazer that had to retire. That's the only thing I can think of. No offense, Brandon Roy. No offense. I understand you tried to come back, but yeah, gave it a shot. But ultimately, non-factor, and now he's had yet another setback. Apparently. It's crazy to think of how old the season is because they say he's missed 38 games this year. That's weird. It's, the season's that old already. Wow. But, um, yeah. It's at that point he's just saying uh, I, a quote from Brandon Roy in the Real GM says, realgm.com, a real, you know, he says, as soon as it happened in, in my head, I, said, I just said, I quit. I just quit. That was my first thought that I couldn't do this anymore. I'm at a crossroad in my career. But it's kind of, well, yeah, I mean, I would have said that in the first setback, not the second one. No offense, but... I think it's just one road that he can go. Yeah, that's it. And the other one's under construction. There's no... (laughs) He's... There's only one thing he can do right now. Just retire and maybe, hopefully, coach. That's what he's looking to... That's the other side of this storyline. He hopes to get into coaching or to move into... Yeah. I wouldn't mind him with the yeah, Wolves. Chris, Cross, yeah. Chris Crossroads is just deciding if he's going to coach or not. Because mm-hmm. him, uh, Roy playing again, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, because when we first found out, way, way back in, was it late November, 
that he had grade three. See, I didn't realize how far it was. Maybe some people out there already knew that, but I hadn't really read up on that part of his uh, yeah. condition. I knew I it was. It yeah, we knew it was bad, but grade three arthritis—that's yeah. like the end of the line. Yeah, I'm thinking that treatment is going to allow him to play. Then the only thing that was going to slow him down uh, was just pain eventually. Yeah. Yet instead, it's literally like it's gone. It's literally just like it's unbelievable how bad it, you know how bad a condition it really was. It was all the way at the end of the line there. Yeah. You you th- would think that uh, Khan or, or would have said, okay, we need to look uh, into this further to see how uh, how bad this really is before uh, we decide to give this guy five million dollars. Yeah, five million. Yeah, I mean they didn't look into it enough, did yeah, they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, if anybody can come <laughs> in, come back, get. Uh, you know, give another shot to do uh, anything that they love doing. Mm-hmm. Get five million for it. You can't feel sorry for him if it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you gave it another shot. You got five million out of it. But if you're thinking about being a coach right now, um, as a coach, coaching an NBA team, you'd be pretty upset if you're paying the guy five mil and he refuses to give you that roster spot. You know, yeah, he's injured. Mm-hmm. I mean, Roy should just. I mean, maybe Kyle, maybe we're using him as a you know a sweetener for a trade, mm-hmm. like an expiring contract type yeah. thing. Yeah, because that's what he would be. Yeah, you know they they did that with Terrell Brandon, the Timberwolves years ago. That's how they got Latrell Sprewell. Actually, was Terrell was in a situation where it was that uh, microfracture surgery, and in his case, that he just that was it. He was he tried to come back, kept trying, and never did. He just could not. So they used his contract for a trade to get Latrell Sprewell. In a four-team trade, huge four-team trade with the Hawks and all that. Um, Hawks, Knicks, uh, I can't remember now exactly. Oh, man, my head's like popping here. <laughs> Hawks, Knicks, Wolves, and one other club that's blanking on me. Maybe it was just three. No, there was a four. There might have been Milwaukee, but it doesn't matter. It's ten years ago. <laughs> but, yeah, a similar situation where you maybe could do that if you really want to do, but otherwise... I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing him as a coach here. Actually, he would. I I think he could be a helpful coach here. You think so, or you're not really worried about that at this point? Yeah, uh, with Roy, I would just rather just see him um, leave this mm-hmm. organization. Yeah, because the injuries. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not blaming him for the injuries, but it's just too much has been going on. Yeah, it's been. It's, it's like the curse, isn't it? Yeah, because every time we see his face, it's, we're going to be reminded of a roster spot that, that was wasted. Yeah. You know, and right now, hopefully, we'll get something for him. Maybe. Yeah, you know, it's expiring for another team, you know, get us actual shooting guard who can play. It'd be nice. Courtney Lee, yes. We'll see what happens with the Celtics. We're going to talk about them later. They're talking about injuries there. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Yeah, we've yeah, had a lot, a lot of, of injuries, yeah. Yeah, one fatal one. That's the end of the line for Garnett's uh, Celtics era. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll get to that way, way later. <laughs> it's like, I wish we could talk about it now, but that's okay. <laughs> but that would make us a little bit unorganized there. Yeah, uh, Ricky Rubio, man, he is showing signs. He is yes. showing some serious signs. Yes. Oh, isn't that terrific? Yeah, I mean, really, ever since the Clipper game, it's like, okay, yeah, this is a good this is a good indication. Uh, he's He looks like Ricky Rubio again. Yeah. The only thing missing is the 12 assists. He's getting like 6 and 7 still, but eventually I think the 12 assists will be back when you have a guy like Kevin Love out there. You're like, who? <laughs> Kevin Love's kind of like Brandon Roy right now, but no, not permanently. That's the good part. It's not At least it's not a degenerative situation like poor Brandon. And I do feel for you, Brandon. We're not trying to make light of your situation, honestly. Um, yeah, very exciting, though, to see that uh, he had a dribble kind of behind the back through the leg type jump. I, it's hard to explain, actually. How did it? <laughs> it was kind of a between the leg, behind the back type of dribble where he had to, where he jumped. That yeah, was a great yeah, play. Yeah, they could have called Trevor, but. Um, <laughs> but but the jump prevented it, I yeah. guess. A little hop. A little hop. Yeah, it was a good play. Blew to the basket, and yeah. It does show that he does have scoring ability. Yeah, I think he's coming back. He's, he's mm-hmm. not. Yeah, the first couple of games, I'm thinking, okay. Next year, we're going to get the old Rubio because right now we're not getting anything. Right now, Rubio should be coming off the bench. That's what it looked like for a while. Yeah, yeah. It was horrible. It was bad. I mean, it, it just he was not even close to the same guy. No. Now we're starting to see it. Thank God. Oh, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, I, I, I was wondering how long it was going to take. 
he might not quite quit get the MVP of the league like Adrian Peterson did after the ACL injury. <laughs> uh, by the way, wink, wink. That's like his... F- yes. Yes. Fresh <laughs> fresh off the press here the last about half hour or so. Adrian Peterson, Purple Mafia listeners, Adrian Peterson is the National Football League MVP. Yeah, it doesn't get better than that. Outside of a Super Bowl MVP to go along with it, but yeah, that's going to happen next year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we hope. Purple Mafia listeners, yes. Yes, little shout out. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Rubio, Rubio. That was, yeah, I mean, thank God we have we, we have a guy like that, though. That's that's like, thank God for that, huh? Oh, boy. So now we slide over to the Facebook page. Aren't you excited? So, yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> simply go into the search bar, type in Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves. Go there, click like, and be ready to have some conversation with us. Yes, sir. Uh, a couple of posts along the way. I posted the, uh, the Wolves got signed to the second contract, second 10-day contract. Gillibel and Chris Johnson, yes, sir. Welcome aboard. Alan Iverson. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to post this in the league news, but I figured why just just, just say it now because it's not really big deal. Uh, Alan Iverson was being recruited by the D-League uh, legends. I don't know about a D-League legend, do you? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but he won't be a legend in the D-League. He ended up declining that, but he hopes to return to the NBA at age 37. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? No. No. It's not happen. <laughs> no, he's just done as Roy's really done. You know, I mean, he's just done. He couldn't play anymore when he was with Detroit and all that, could he? I, I didn't see it. Well, when he was in uh, Detroit, they were blaming him for, uh, Detroit. you know, uh, Chauncey leaving and everything like that. They were yeah. just blaming him for losing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, it's, their, it's their own fault for just throwing away Chauncey Billups like that. Yeah. I, I don't know what the hell they're doing. What the, the, Detroit has mystified me since 2006, I think. Like, What the hell did they do over there? That team, I mean, they fried uh, a great team there. Yeah, from what it looked like to me, they just, you know, after that trade, they just refused to play. That was it, yeah. I mean, it's been that way ever since. Yeah, I think uh, Rip was uh, the most vocal about it. I can't imagine he was happy. I mean, he stunk the last four or five years, too, over yeah. there. Yeah. He just seemed like a, a zombie, and he still is one, unfortunately. Never been the same. It's, uh, poor Pistons. <laughs> <laughs> and yep, h- hello Keelan King. Yes, Rip City Bad Boys podcast. Yes, sir. Keelan King, Tristan Mayer. Oh yeah, they gave us a shout out again. They were teasing you about being a Bucks fan. So the Bucks fan <laughs> is this guy right here, Demarcus. No, I'm kidding. Marcus, the forecaster, was a uh, grew up a Bucks fan, became a Wolves fan, moved to Minnesota out of Racine, Wisconsin, who also uh, is home to uh, Karan Butler. Yeah. Yes, Karan Butler, Racine, Wisconsin native. I'm a Golden Valley native, yep, yep. So I'm still in Golden Valley, yeah. <laughs> Golden Valley, Minnesota, by the way. <sighs> when I made fun of when I was just spacey like Alan Iverson is done, Jules Posterino saying, not so fast. I can see the wolf signing this washed-up train wreck. <laughs> it's like, there's your shooting guard. And it's sad because it's a possibility, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I said, you have a point being we signed Roy. Yeah. You know, there's another train wreck for you. Yes, <laughs> Just a little research in the Roy in Roy's knees, you know. We should have, yeah. You should have gone after Mayo or Crawford. Mm. I just don't understand why. Um, oh, Mayo, man, alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted him so bad. I mean, it's like you, you know, most people would be like, "Oh, what do you think you are, the GM of the team?" And it's like, well, I, I don't necessarily think I'm like this, this genius, but it's like, well, come on, it didn't take much thought. To yeah. think that uh, O.J. Mayo is a decent player and Dallas did not give him much. I, I know he had character issues. That's the biggest thing. And speaking about those Grizzlies, what the hell are they doing? I mean, <laughs> Detroit Pistons, we, we're questioning their style, their approach with their players, personnel, and all that. Grizzlies doing something very similar over there. We're getting to yeah. that soon. What in the hell are they doing? And the O.J. Mayo move is one of them. Though that maybe was a situation where those two parties needed to uh, go their separate ways. Maybe. Seemed like a lot of BS going on in there. But, oh boy. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Yeah, the only way I can justify the uh, Roy signing is thinking, okay, maybe Khan is smarter than, than, than all of us. Maybe he is. Maybe he just yes. he knew he was going to retire. And yeah. He was thinking, let me dump money into him. <laughs> so he's just an expiring. 
Uh, we are going to try to It'll acquire. No. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't work out, you know, he's an expiring. Mm-hmm. But no, that's yeah, that was just a dumb, a dumb signing. Mm-hmm. And, and it's sad because I was all excited. I, I I think we both were a little bit, but then you look at the situation. There had to be have been some research. Supposedly yeah. that that scope that he had way back in November revealed that he had level three, but I I mean he had to know a little bit more than that, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, you think a doctor would say, Okay, uh I don't even advise you to uh walk out you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean you're barely you get a wheelchair right now. It's like wait, wait a minute, basketball. What? Yeah. And not just basketball, not like at the Y M C A, you know, playing yeah. leagues playing leagues on on Tuesdays and Thursdays or something. We're talking NBA basketball here. Yeah. 82 games, high, high travel, high stress, playing against Kobe Bryant. You know yeah. what I mean? Come on, yeah. you know? <laughs> starter. <laughs> yeah, starter. Look, like, look here, son. Like, like, I'm, I'm, you should be lucky you can even walk right now. Yeah, it's it's one of those deals. Yeah, like, you might not be walking in a couple of years, you know. Yeah. And you're really going to try to play basketball. National Basketball Association level basketball, yeah. too. Like, not even D-League. Like, way higher yeah. than D-League. I don't even advise, you know, <laughs> <laughs> playing their family picnics. Much yeah. Less, you know, the NBA. Yeah. Maybe just horse. No. I had to say it. Little, little horse. Well, he would kill everybody in that, I'm sure. Because he was one hell of a shooter. Oh, yeah. Of course, he didn't hit one three, but uh, oh, look how mean I am. Who's going off during practice? Yes. And we're watching them uh, play, you know, shoot around. We're talking about practice. <laughs> Not a game. Not a game. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's about it, though, isn't it? Oh. But, uh, horrible signing. Uh, do wish you the best, Roy. Um, we love you. Hopefully something can be done with your contract, either a trade or if that's not going to happen, you know, we do need that roster spot. Yes, please, Lord, give us that roster spot. Okay, I'm not, no, he's not the Lord. Sorry, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I wish we could have Courtney like he gets. Talk about buy low, but now that's starting What's to get harder. Yeah, it's no longer low. Uh, yeah, with all the injuries there. Uh, yep. They're dropping like flies over in Beantown. Yeah. Yes. Over in Beantown, they're dropping like flies. Okay, that's the wrong accent. But uh, real quick, though, i got to say this real fast, is uh, one final post by Brent Jacobson. He says, seeing how this season is going down the porcelain for the T-Wolves, why not just tank and get a lottery pick? Trade off some of our valuable slash <laughs> expendable assets like Berea and Reload for 2013-2014. Yep. Yeah. Yep, he looked- yeah. That's yeah. something, because the, the um, season's pretty much over now. Yeah, and we hate to be we hate to be negative, but it's just looking like the way it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we won by thirty tonight, but you know, it's it was actually, it was actually a loss long term. <laughs> <laughs> and then we lost the draft pick. No, I'm yeah. kidding. And thank God we have a draft pick this year. No more Sam Cassell nonsense. And yeah, I've been saying that every show. Sorry, but <laughs> so yeah, I'll look, um, I believe that concludes the Facebook. Uh, oh, we, we, we brought that up on the last show, that Vince Germano statement that said, uh, what about a guy like Alec Burks for the two-guard spot? So, interesting. Huh? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's an interesting possibility, but, oh, man. I mean, I wish we could have Courtney lead. Yeah, that's one, but that's going to get a lot harder. Yep. <laughs> Dinking around at real GM here. Looks like Celtics are after... Possibly meeting with Greg Oden. You got to like that. Michael K- Gilchrist collapsed to the floor and was motionless for several minutes before moving or opening his eyes. Yikes. Michael K- Gilchrist. Yes, that's uh, one of those where you stay tuned and hope for the best there. That doesn't sound good. So we're kind of bouncing a little bit here with league news. So uh, with that, I guess well, there's also the Twitter interactions too real quick, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Uh, boy, me and Vince Germano having a lot to say there for a while. Ah, uh, trying to get caught up here. Man, alive. Ah, uh, ba ba. Go up a little bit. Here we go. He's saying, I feel for you, brother. Vince Germano saying that about how the, the team was just, everybody's hurt. We couldn't beat anybody. It's been a very frustrating week. Uh, <laughs> William Outstelt saying that uh, Chase will change everything. <laughs> Gotta like that. I believe I was complaining. Yeah, I said, man, that was terrible. The Wizards, man. Really? The Wizards? You know, that was actually last week still. Uh, that was actually... Oh, those are actually from last week. Excuse me. 
Tom Reed saying not long till 100, mate. So yeah, we're getting there. 94, episode 94. We're getting very, very close. We're getting perilously close. Nick Caro. Yes, sir. I believe he's been on uh, that basketball show. We miss you guys. We haven't heard them in forever. Yes, Pumpa and Train do host that show. I believe Nick Carl has been on that show a few times. He says, uh, might, co- might come back after this timeout. <laughs> Durant and Russ definitely going to drive the paint. That was, uh, yeah, that was when we were, we were talking about the Lick, uh, what am I talking about? The Lakers and the Thunder. And I said, looks like they agree because immediately after that, they came back in when he said, what to do with Dwight? Five fouls and chance of overtime. Sit him for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, this is when we get into like some funny stuff about the the Bucks and <laughs> the the Bucks and uh, the the Bucks conversation from Keelan King. I believe what is going on here. I was telling him how Marcus is originally from Racine, Wisconsin. I'm originally from Minnesota. He says that's no excuse about being a Bucks fan. <laughs> he was, he's just having fun with us, though. Yep, nothing personal, of course. Yeah, the Bucks sent us Marcus the forecaster. He says our memories are awful for stuff, not the Blazers or Pistons. He couldn't remember. He says, why? The Bucks, man. I don't know if you saw that tweet, yeah, did you? That, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> funny. He said, that's no excuse. And Tristan Mayer jumping in saying, well, at least that's a good fan. Well, there you go. Yeah, huh? you know, you're going to be loyal. Yes. So are they still your second favorite team at this point? Yeah. They're your second? Yep. Yeah, I, I, it was hard to forgive um, them for uh, trading Ray Allen. Yeah. Like they did. Yeah, that was, man, that was almost 10 yeah. years ago. Wow, time is short, isn't it? That was almost 10 years ago. That was in February 2003. <laughs> Don't ask why I remember that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I remember it for a big reason. Crazy stuff. Well, personally, I wanted Gary Payton so bad, and we didn't get him because he went to the Bucks that day. Damn it. <laughs> the old Garnett and Payton dream came to an end. He wasn't there for long. Talk about, talk about selling high by the, uh, excuse me, by the, the Bucks. Or, excuse me, the Celtics, the Celtics, the Sonics, the Sonics sold very high, didn't they, in that one? They sold him right before he went down the toilet. Uh, Vince Germano saying, you guys ready to rumble? That was at the Lakers game. So we love tweeting Saturday afternoon, fellas. <laughs> Tom Reed of Believe the Hype also saying he just finished the new episode, Lakers versus Wolves. You win still. Go, Lakers. I wish we won. Oh, Tom Reed and Benyon Kadim. Yes, sir. I thought we had a chance. Thought we did. I thought we did. Yep, lots of interaction between me and uh, Vince Germano. Him saying, man, I love Rubio. Because that was when the Wolves are making the comeback and Rubio was starting to show signs. He said, it's great to see. He's so much fun to watch when we were talking about uh, Rubio kind of coming back to form. He says, here come the Timberwolves making a comeback. And yeah, it didn't happen. I was basically telling him, there's no way we're going to. We're, we're not going to win, Vince. I, I just know it because of the way they it would just seem like a typical Lakers Wolves game. Again, we're still getting ahead of ourselves here. I almost should have left this. In fact, I think I will. Yeah, I'm going to leave these for a little while. Yes. I'll leave these for now for the Lakers game, <laughs> briefly. So, with that, uh, yeah, because I mean, why, yeah, why talk about it when we're going to talk about it in a second? <laughs> anyway, so with that, we're going to take a quick break and then we will get to those game reviews right after this. Well, we're ready for the Super Bowl yet again tomorrow. How excited oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. What do you think? Pizzas? Oh, yeah, drinks yep. and everything. Some nice pop and everything. Yes, get as much as we can. Get some little game in there before the game. Yeah, maybe. Maybe some blades of steel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I got to give them a payback. That's right. But yeah, I'm ready. I am, too. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, episode number 94, which is a reminder for all you MP3 player listeners out there like iPods, Android devices, and the and the whole lot. <laughs> yep, of course, on Apple devices, it's iTunes. On Android devices, it is Double Twist. Yes, sir. Go to the application store, get Double Twist. There's also Stitcher for Android. I'm not sure if we're on it yet, but hopefully very soon. Dylan Richardson, the executive producer of the sportsstuff.com, has that in the works as well. Would be terrific. Yes, it would. Also, uh, Howlin' T Wolf is a wonderful website that's kind enough to put a link to our show on their website. We appreciate it very much. They write a lot of great articles, 
Jonah, Derek, and Tom. Yes, sir. They keep up very well with the Timberwolves. Game by game basis, positives, negatives, the whole shebang. Holland T. Wolf is a wonderful website indeed. Isn't it? Yes. So also we have a phone line, by the way, out there. 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Remember to mention which show you're calling into, which is Timberwolves Explosion, and we will have you on air like we did like we did with Sebastian Balls last week. Yes, sir. More and more. Hop on board and talk Timberwolves. All right, well, it's time to review the games. How excited are you? Like, eh, not really, right? <laughs> Wednesday is coming. I'm just kidding. No, tonight's game was good, but the two Lakers, uh, Lakers and Clippers games were, well, they were okay. Played the LA Clippers Wednesday the 30th. We both picked a loss in that one, I believe. Did we? Yes. Yeah, we both picked a loss in that one, so we were correct. Yeah. Aren't you happy? Because we lost. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye on the prize, and you want that pick. Oh, man. 96 90. Yeah, we don't match up well with this team anymore. Last no, year, no. no. Last year, we wanted to match up great. This year, nah. We don't, do we? No. Pekovic and Shaved back in the biz- back in the saddle. Also, uh, Adelman. And Adelman is back in the saddle, yes, on this night. Yeah. The Wolves played better. I mean, at least we didn't get destroyed by Washington, or and then, like, <laughs> got the victory stripped out of our hands by. By that team. Yeah, the yeah. Bobcats. Yeah. We played pretty competitively against a very good team and just didn't win. Just didn't get the cl- didn't make the plays that needed to be made. That's about it. Oh, and by the way, there was some... Uh, yeah, Greg Steamsma <laughs> is getting to become one of the meanest players. Yes. And I'm glad, actually. I actually like it. Because I'm not a fan of Matt Barnes. I'm not. Matt the Punk Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Vince Germano of uh, the wonderful Courtside Podcast, Hank McCoy, Vince Germano, <laughs> and BG, Buckets Magazine, BG, yes sir, <laughs> all of them on Courtside, but yeah, Vince Germano saying um, the Plakers, uh, the Clippers are punks, yeah, they are, they are, yeah, I think they're punks in a big way, I'm, yeah, I don't really <laughs> like any of them, honestly, and the best part about all this, Chris Paul still didn't play that's what's frustrating. Willie Green in 16 minutes did absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. The only positive that he did, he was a plus one. And that's it. What a worthless pile of cockadooky. <laughs> Willie Green, man. Okay, anyhow. The play of the game, I think, yeah, was when... She, I mean, Matt Barnes, what do you think about that? Uh, there was just no reason for uh, Barnes to do that. Yeah, was that really necessary? I mean, they were just kind of bumping into each other. Did he really need to react the way he did? No, no. What did Steve's going to do with that, 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 uh, yeah, no, right? Nothing justified uh, Matt Barnes, like, flipping out and, and, like, shoving the guy's neck back like that. Yeah. He could have got hurt, literally. Like, you don't need to do that type of stuff. I, I mean, I'm I'm actually stunned that Greg Steamsman didn't, like, literally try to lay that SOB on the ground, because I probably yeah, would have. Me too. I was furious when I saw that. I, I would have probably laid him on the ground. Yeah, but unfortunately, it took a little, little frustration out on uh, Grant Hill. Yeah, he really, yeah, uh, yeah, he gave it to Grant Hill, which is kind of funny. Uh, Grant Hill, I've never really been a fan of his, like, ever, honestly, for, like, multiple reasons that maybe don't always need to be mentioned in the show, but... <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, he, uh, he's always been overrated and a pretty boy to me. Eh, you know, <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> the forecaster is nodding in approval there. Yeah, Grand Hill, nah. I don't know, yeah, the next Michael Jordan. Do you remember those days? Yeah, I do. That was annoying. He was never the next Michael Jordan. Anyhow. No, <laughs> it was uh, a baby Jordan. Yeah, at best. And even that guy, yeah, that guy, Harold, uh, what was his name? Harold something. I'm just completely losing my brain yeah, here. Yeah, I forgot his last name. Uh, Dang, damn it. <laughs> Harold Miner, yes. Yeah, yep, I, yep. yeah, he was such a non-factor, he almost yeah. forgot. Harold Miner, yeah. <laughs> yes, we've been around a long time. Yes, sir. Shout out to Vince Germano again. We love to talk old school basketball. Oh, that guy loves old school basketball, too. Luke Longley talking about that. Yeah, he's one of the reasons he got into basketball. He looked at the Timberwolves are his second favorite team. when He started watching the Wolves back when Luke Longley was here. Isn't that cool? Had an extended conversation about that the other night. That was pretty cool. But back to the current Wolves, uh, Steam's my, yeah, I mean, he's got a little bit of, uh, yeah, he's got a feistiness to him that I'm, I, I'm starting to appreciate a little bit. 
That's one of the reasons I gave him the Lone Wolf Award last week. The other reason was nobody else stood out at all. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I would like know. his uh, uh, fight scene this if, it were, if if he was a better player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it, you know, I wish. Gosh darn it! Yeah, I mean, he's he's starting to get a little bit better, which is kind of cool. It's yeah. making him through a little bit. He's he's breaking through a little bit. He's starting to show that he belongs a little bit, a, a little bit. I could see the. I can see the little wince on your face, like, eh. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, right now, well, for me, um, for this team right now, I'd rather have proven guys, not guys who can get just a little better. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you have Peck, and then behind Peck, coming off a bench, I'd rather have an athletic big. Like Chris Johnson, yeah. who absolutely did not play a single iota in this game. Yeah, Much- I don't know why. I mean, you got VNP. You weren't really rebounding. Yeah, I mean, the rebounding, 38 rebounds to, well, Pekovic got 12, that's good to 45. I mean, we didn't get destroyed yeah, in the but category, really but... stop Jordan, though. Yeah, DeAndre Jordan looked really, what the hell? I mean, yeah. he, he really looked good, except for his horrible, like, hack of Jordan free throw shooting, but 4 of 10, but, yeah, I mean, he, just, he made some, he, he, he made some moves in that game that were like, he's not that good, is he? Little bit of Hakeem going on, like up and under and stuff. Yeah, he made yeah, like a ha- he made a Hakeem spin type play, pretty impressive. Shved didn't shoot well, but at least he's better than what we've had at shooting guard. To be honest, now Luke shot really well tonight, but I mean he's he's got some shooting ability, but he's not a guy that I don't know. He's not really a shooting guard. He's not a point guard either. He's no. kind of a third guard. That's kind of what Luke is, and so is Berea. He's not a starter. Neither one should be starting. No. Yeah. Even though they're they're both okay, they're both okay players, but they're not. Yeah, no. I yeah, mean, I'm not I, saying they're bad players. It's just how we're using them is wrong. We count on them too much. Yeah, way <laughs> and it, too much. Yeah, and that's even with good players in the lineup, like the Love and the Rubio type of deal. Like like a uh, Kobe starting against the the Lakers. Yeah, I mean, that's the next. Oh, yep, the next game here. Yep, but yeah, yeah, Luke and Kobe, right? I know you're leading into that, aren't you? Yeah, it just. <laughs> Friday the 1st. Can we- oh, I was thinking, just Kobe's just going to destroy Luke. Yeah. I mean. That was bull crap. Yeah. yeah I was like, please put uh, Jello. Mm hmm. <laughs> Jello Bello. Jabellies. Jello Ball on uh, Kobe. There we go. That's Kobe. That's his new nickname, Jello Ball. Yep. It, and it didn't happen. Luke. Luke Mm-mm. is on Kobe. Uh, it's like, are you. Yeah, there's. <laughs> and Kobe's at a stage where he knows post moves. So, yeah, I mean, come he's on. He's taller. Yeah, he's taller. <laughs> and even if he wasn't taller, it's like, give me a break. Yeah, what's funny is we got this Magic Johnson clone named Kobe Bryant lately. He should be wearing number 32. <laughs> yeah, and another thing with Kobe, uh, it's not even that he can score over Luke. It's that he's now their 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 passer. Yeah, so he Kobe is. can look right over Luke, pass to whoever he wants to. Easy mm-hmm. passes. Yeah, passing lane was very easy for him. <laughs> That was funny. He only shot four of thirteen in the game. That's weird, isn't it? That's like a Luke Ridnour line. <laughs> well, Kobe is not that actually has the best field goal percentage in the league. No, he never so, really has. Yeah. has he? He's always been kind of just yeah. He can he can hit threes late in games. That's what he's really known for. In the yeah, many 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 years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And years. Okay, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> But this game, yeah, Pau Gasol, gee, many Christmas, he just destroyed us inside. Just killed us. It was just like tip in, you know, open <laughs> one-on-one play, yeah, basket, yeah. one-on-one basket, one-on-one ba- you know. That was weak. Pekovic, yeah, he killed Pekovic. And Pekovic is a good center, and a lot of us would think of, I'd rather have Pekovic than Pau, but in that night, Pau, than, I'd rather have Pau yeah. than Pekovic, at least in that game. And the two future Lakers. Well, I don't know who, yeah. would, I don't know who would say, uh, Pick up a pal. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh, Vince, wise. Vince Germano! Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, he loves Pau Gasol. Yeah, lots of interaction. This is uh, Timberwolves Explosion versus Vince Germano, Tom Reed, and V-Train. Yep. <laughs> Those guys all against us. It was a two-on-three battle, and they won because it was two-on-three, you know? That's why they won. Damn it, they outnumbered us. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Earl Clark, yeah, he makes a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I've been noticing that. I mean, well, I've noticed that all year. He's he's okay, but it's like, man, he's one of those guys. He's just in there because he's in there. I don't know. You know, the the Lakers always have a guy like that on their roster, don't they? They're just kind of there because they're there. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was pretty disappointed in this loss. I thought this would be the the yeah. game, the time to um to finally fin- beat them. To finally beat them. Yet it seemed uh, literally the first quarter on. It was like it's just Lakers Wolves all over again. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Shaq and Kobe, if it's Kobe and and Bynum or Kobe and whoever. It's just the same old thing. You know, they they either come off to a blazing start and just maintain it the whole way, or or. We're doing really well, and they come all the way back and just kind of totally take the life out of us by, like, halfway through the fourth quarter. And every time the Wolves were making their comeback and Vince Germano and others were getting worried, like, oh, here come the Wolves, and it's like, yeah, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's They weren't going to come back. It's And I'm, it's not trying to be negative. It's just you. we've seen this before over and over and over. It's just the same old thing where... Every time the Wolves go, oh my God, they're on a 10 run. Here we go. You know, and literally like 5, 10 minutes later, that whole 10 run is gone. It's just negated because, because whatever reason, the Lakers go on an 8 run or we start turning the ball over, blah, blah, blah. Or the Lakers start shooting poorly, and it's like, oh, the Lakers turn the ball over. They're missing shots, and Ridnour just missed a tip. Or Ridnour just missed a baseline shot, and there's a dunk, you know. That's basically typical Wolves and Lakers. Uh, at one point, Vince Germano was saying, "I'm tipping overtime." He believed we were going to be an OT. Uh, there were some making fun of us. Yeah, look at you. It's making fun of us with that. How dare you? No, <laughs> he actually did believe that we were going to come back. I think. Well, obviously, the Lakers have struggled all year. That's probably why he was thinking that, because you know he's probably glass half empty right now with the way the Lakers have been this year. So, which is exactly the way we feel with the Wolves and Lakers most of the. Season Chris Johnson did play in this game and it, yeah at the end there yeah and the numbers were fantastic for eleven minutes eight and five hey man eight and five in eleven minutes against the Lakers not bad no oh, what's that I just saw the no, eyes um, pop this there is, uh, <laughs> his rebounds yeah that's yeah like I said eight and five yeah, yeah. five rebounds in limited time no his compared to everyone else's no one yeah. actually rebounded the ball well during mm-hmm. that game nobody really yeah I mean Pekovic. Derek Williams got nine, but in 32 minutes. Pekovic got nine in 34 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, pound for pound, Chris Johnson, very good game for him. Very efficient in limited time. And another thing uh, with Chris Johnson, um, I think that I noticed it in um, today's game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the brief time. Yeah, he finally got in there. Um, Eight that, that I think that, that uh, Adelman is uh, saying, hey, you're power forward. I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm not playing you a center. That's bad. Yep. Yeah. That's bad news because eventually Love is coming back, and we're not mad about Love coming back or anything, but that could be the the uh, the death nail. Yeah. Because we know what happens to power forwards <laughs> when Love is in there. I mean, there's, I mean, you're going to have at least one backup, and obviously John De Cunningham is at lots of times plays backup power forward or backup small forward, but uh, Love gets a lot of playing time when he's healthy because he should, and. Yeah, that could be fatal. Unless uh, un- unless there's a trade, who knows what's going to happen to this team? It's gonna there's going to be a lot of decisions made. Uh, and I I don't even know if I mentioned this on a previous show, but probably like two shows ago I should have mentioned because the news update was Malcolm Leak officially out for the year uh, after the surgery. So yeah, Malcolm Leak. You remember that name? I missed him. <laughs> I do too. I, uh, I, yeah, uh, he was getting better than. He was yeah. He got injured. Yeah, once he it's like at first it's like, oh, he shouldn't be starting. Oh man, that's why we really are yeah. screwed because that that's why if we're down to a point where Malcolm Lee's starting, man. Yeah, he was just basically defense and that was it. Yeah, he was a complete non factor and then all of a sudden, you know, we started noticing some dribble drive and yeah. dunk. The triple the triple D effect. Dribble drive dunk. Yeah. It actually exists on the Timberwolves when Malcolm Lee's in the game. And speed was crazy. <laughs> he was good. Yeah. Dribble drive dunk, baby. And then it was, no. Nope. Obviously because they hyperextended. Uh, it was like a lot of things. It's like a hip and everything. He, he, he's kind of like Marion Gabrick of the Minnesota Wild with like multiple injuries at the same time type of deal. That's not good. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad. I mean, I, I hate these type of injuries. Uh, Johnny, yeah. Fl- yeah. Hyperextended right knee, and we know what happened to the other guy, too. Yep, we, we talk about it too much, but yeah, the hyperextended knee that turned into an ACL, God rest his season. <laughs> Josh Howard, maybe his career this time. <sighs> Bummer. And no, that's not a sigh. That's not a yawn, it's a sigh. <laughs> to those of you wondering, 
Ain't you no know, yawning over he is. So yeah, it was a fun. It was a fun game, but it, nah, no, no, it wasn't. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we, we just the whole saying, game. Speak for yourself. That for yeah, me, that was it wasn't frustrating. fun. Yeah, we. Yeah, I was like, oh, the whole game we knew we weren't gonna win. Yeah, we're too experienced and jaded, right? If someone saw uh, the lane open just for Gasol just to waltz oh. in there and, and dunk it, that was weak. Yeah, I... that was really weak. Yeah. Oh, here's a quick one too. A quick opinion by uh, Vince Germano of watching the Wolves game. There, he said, uh, "Have to play Shved as the starting two in my view for the rest of the year. Develop the kid quicker." Mm, what do you think? I still think uh, he should come off the bench. I mean, uh, this is. What about uh, if we, Luke? Like, though? if we get someone better, if we yeah, get if we get someone, yeah. If not, then uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, for the def- defensive purposes, I, I say yeah. Probably would have to. <laughs> Yeah, like with the current roster, I say leave him in for the rest of this year. Yeah, yeah. as the starter, he has yeah. not started yet. I, I, yeah, I like him better than Ridnar starting yeah. at this point. You know, yeah, the Ridnar is a liability playing against uh, starting shooting guards. Yep, I mean, look, last year he had some good run, but at the same time, it's weird. You know, he's not a starting shooting guard. Yeah. You know, that's just like uh, oh, shucks, we're gonna do this for this particular game because they're playing Willie Green and. You know, uh, uh, what's his name? Bledsoe. That's when you can have a shot at it, I think. Like the Clipper game. Yeah. But when you're playing against Kobe Bryant, that's like the death yeah. nail. <laughs> you know? I knew it was over. Yeah, I mean, Shved's defense isn't exactly Joe Dumar's level, but it's, well, at least he's long, I guess. You know, and if he's going to develop, he's going to have to. He's going to have to. This is the time to do it, yeah. you know. So, yeah, yeah, good, good, good thought, Vince, there. He likes, he also likes the look of Chris Johnson. Yes. By the way, Vince's Twitter is at Vinrock, at V-I-N-R-O-K-44. Yes. He likes to look at Chris Johnson, and we do too. We, we love Chris Johnson. He also says it looks like a good find. Con! Con! That's how, uh, that's how uh, Hank McCoy does it. Con! I love how he does it. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a good find. Yeah, yeah definitely. I like Chris Johnson. He he deserves to be in the in the league. I mean, there's a lot of junk in the NBA at the end of the bench, and yes, we know out there that <laughs> yeah, like how Keelan King at times says like, dude, everybody, you know, anybody at the end of the bench would destroy anybody else. And yeah, would we agree with that? You know, they destroy any other person trying to play basketball against them. Yeah. But just saying, there is a lot of junk in the league compared to. I, I think Chris Johnson belongs in the league. There's a guy that would destroy everybody. <laughs> um. William Outselt says, bleep that mother bleeper, Paul Gasol, at Paul Gasol, ouch. Yeah, he can't stand it. <laughs> bleep that smelly mother bleeper. Ooh, so Vince's not going to like that one too much. He says, you boys don't give up credit to them and Adelman. So it was a nice comeback, but, <coughs> excuse me, fortunately fell short. Al Horton, that's right, the Alan Horton, the voice of the Timberwolves, says, and things were looking promising, too. So he tweeted me. Yes, thank you very much, Al. Because I retweeted what he said, oh, the first three quarters, the Wolves. See, I put this on here because it's a nice stat. The Wolves had 9 of 14 three-pointers. Fourth quarter, what did they do? 1 of 8. Say it one more time. 1 of 8. Yeah, 1 of 8 from 3. Yuck. Didn't work out. <laughs> that's just like strike 1, strike 2, strike 3, strike 4, strike... Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> give it up. We just fell, fell flat on our butoxis in that fourth quarter, and that's typical of Minnesota and L.A. It just is. I mean, it's been the case for years and years and years. Ugh. I remember back when the Wolves were really good trying to pass the Lakers, you know, back in like 2000-ish, 2001. Tie game, home game against L.A. Here we go, rock and roll, and the Lakers beat us by 20. It was like, Goodbye. Good night. Kevin Garnett didn't score a point. I remember I remember being at a game like that years ago. I was like, man, that was bull. <laughs> so now we go to the little uh the little uh the little block party they had at Target Center tonight. Yes. The second Saturday the second. And by the way, the final score of the Laker game one eleven to one hundred, if I rudely did not announce it yet. A one fifteen to eighty six trampling of the New Orleans Hornets. Oh yes. Hornets, Pelicans, whatever they are, we trampled them. Uh, by the way, we picked, uh, we both picked, yes, we both picked the Wolves to defeat the Lakers, so we were wrong in that prediction. Mm-hmm. We were right in the Clipper game. <laughs> you picked us to lose against New Orleans, didn't you? Yeah. 
from when I listened back. Yeah. And I picked yeah. the Wolves to win. So, oh, man, I got another game on you. Now you hate me. Oh. What's going on? You hate What's me, don't you? On, yeah, you have to remember that's a home game. Shame I thought on Gordon you. was going to play. Yeah, that guy's never healthy, is he? I don't know. Eric, Eric Gordon's a joke. He's 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 never healthy. He's always hurt. I'm kind of sore knee, and his his picture. Yeah, it looks like it's sore, doesn't he? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I'm always uh, hurt. Uh, you want to play here? Uh. Yeah, he doesn't even look. Yeah, that is the most ingenuine smile I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, it's like, uh, like, do I? I really you know, don't want to be here. Well, yeah. why not? It's not that bad, you know. I would. I'd rather be there than you know. I don't know. Some places. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I I can't imagine it's that bad. I, I remember Baron Davis had the same look on his face when he was being interviewed or whatever. Was in, it was like their first year there? Why does everybody hate it so much there? I, I mean, I would hate the humidity in the summertime. Screw that. But that's why you, in the summertime, you move up north again. Like saying, I'm a Minnesota native. I move back up here. Granted, it's hot and humid here in the summertime. You don't really escape it either. <laughs> but at least it's not like every single day. You might get some of those cold fronts that drop the humidity down. Yes. Weather forecast here on Timberwolves Explosion. Yes. Uh, wolves trampled the hornets. That was a lot of fun. Yes. Ricky Rubio, very strong. Again, not spectacular, but this was, uh, you know, and that's the weird part. He only played 22 minutes, 22 and a half minutes tonight. Strange. But I suppose it's like, get him out of there when we're playing so well. We're so far ahead. Shved throwing in eight assists tonight, huh? Six assists for Boreas. Four for Luke, the new hope. So we had a lot of assists tonight. Yeah, Ricky played a, uh, a lot better. He looks, he's, star- he's really starting to look like the the guy. Yeah. The guy again. Yes, the guy that, you know, that got everybody going last year before the injury. Really cool to see. Steve. I wish uh, Derek uh, Williams would have uh, gotten more minutes in that game, though. Yeah, and he, he didn't play particularly well either, but still, yeah, he only got 14 minutes. Ouch. As a starter, by the way. Not good. I mean, I thought uh, from the looks of it, he played okay defense. Um, He's all right, yeah. Yeah, he was turning the ball over a lot, so. Steamy threw in two blocks tonight. Fun little effort, and yeah. Pekovic missed a layup, I believe, in one of the potential assists for yeah, Rubio. Just dunk it. Dunk it. Okay, <laughs> that's one of the reasons. Ru- you know, when I talked about how Rubio, you know, he's not getting those twelve assists like last year. That's because nobody's finishing on some of his like easy assists that he's given him. Yeah. You know his true. his Brett Favre passes where you lead him to a, a touchdown, whatever, and they're not scoring those touchdowns. They're like missing layups. Come on, guys. Kurlenko misses layups a lot. Ahem, but he gets a uh, Shved gets a lot of uh, uh, alley oops to him. Uh, there was a gorgeous alley oop from I believe it was. Sh- I can't remember if it was Rubio or Shved. I think it's Rubio. Just gorgeous, actually put in by Kirilenko, one of his 12 points tonight. Yeah. That was an intense dunk. And Kirilenko, Also, it's uh, Cun- uh, Cunningham, too. That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, there were some really good ones. Cun- Cunningham does put him in. And by the way, what did Cunningham, what was Cunningham's field goal percentage tonight, Marcus? Huh? Nine of nine. So what, what does that equate to percentage wise? Huh? Hundred percent. That's right. That's what we call giving a hundred percent right there. Hundred ten percent. He was a plus twenty seven as well. So that's a like a, like a hockey stat right there. He was a plus twenty seven. Dante Cunningham, player of the game tonight, without a doubt. Well, actually, Ru- well, Rubio or Cunningham, I would say, just wow. <laughs> yes, that was awesome. Uh, Greg Steams, by though, again, another solid game. He had some double-digit games the last week or so. That's why I gave him the award last week. Uh, two blocks tonight. Feisty again tonight. Getting a technical foul. Uh, who was he crashing into? Doggone it. I thought, oh, Greg, not Greg. What am I talking about? The the rookie of the year. No, <laughs> that guy. The number one pick, Anthony Davis. It was something with that. Some physical plays going on. Yeah, the, I think the... Uh the tech was actually, oh, he did get a tech, and there was another yes. tech on Berea and Davis. Yeah, it was a lot going on there. There was a, It was a triple tech. So if you play Chrono Trigger out there and you got the three characters, okay, sorry. I think it was just a two. <laughs> it seems we got it first. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he got one first, and they and there was another play a couple minutes later. Yeah. So Steamy would have been ejected, Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Some, sometimes there's a rare case where there's two technicals and they're not ejected because it's like certain grades, which is just 
the technicality in that gets kind of strange. It's happened like two or three times where somebody's got two technicals and not gotten ejected. I, uh, I, I don't know. That's getting a little too weird for me. It's like, okay, that's a grade three tech, but uh, so, you know, a grade two, you'd be gone, but a grade three, you're still in. So, um, um, okay, just kidding. So the fine will be uh, $350 uh, instead of 400 Okay, sorry. <laughs> Jelly Bell actually had a really nice little game tonight, too. He shot pretty well. I mean, granted, the the fear factor, the, you know, the, the game was not very scary pretty much by the time he was getting a lot of his points. But still, hey, we'll take it. He played pretty well. 11-point game for the J- Jelly Bell. From from France. Actually, uh, Lou played pretty well. He did. He made like <laughs> he he put in some nice dunks. He missed both of his free throws as usual. Yeah. That's pathetic, man. He's the worst free throw shooter ever. But it's okay. He actually looked kind of good out there too, which is funny. He he did. He mm. he was putting the the alley oops in there. We'll take it. And Chris Johnson, perfect. Yep, giving a hundred percent, hundred ten percent. Yeah, and yet he was a minus four, which is kind of funny. Uh, there was a point in this game, I was like, oh boy, right before the half, there was a lot of turnovers with the Wolves, but you know, New Orleans didn't capitalize for jack yeah. squat. So, whatever, right? It's just like <laughs> tough tough garbage there for uh, New Orleans, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, that was a blowout game by halftime. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I was just, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, um, Derek Williams should have gotten more uh, minutes. Yeah, I yeah he didn't get he, he unless got him unless play he, a little bit pretty much I mean we have a uh, another co- coach excuse me a coach working with him right now yeah yeah but unless he said hey this is what you go get from there's no point in getting this guy any extra minutes yeah it could you know? be I hope not that's yeah. I hope that's not what they're yeah, saying yeah me too because that'd be the death nail you know yeah, yeah, use that word a few times under- <laughs> I, I don't understand why he's not getting more minutes than this I mean that was the game was pretty much over. Yeah, he, he 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 just needs to keep playing, you know. Yeah. Let him make mistakes, even though he's he's kind of not been making as many lately, which is nice, which we do appreciate. But either way, I mean, yeah, we haven't seen that old three point shot as much lately either. Unfortunately, that's the crummy part. Yeah, but that's true. Yeah, it, it was a fun game though. I mean, we we needed it. We were on a six game losing streak. The Timberwolves were on a six game losing streak, and that's finally coming to an end. So for the predictions, I was two for two and one. You were one and two. Like, Joey, why'd you have to bring that up? Son of a gun. Why'd you have to bring it up? Because <laughs> I'm mean, right? So, officially, now I am at 9 and... and What am I saying? I am at 9 and 10 on the year. You are now at... Uh, you are now 6 and 12. We're like, Joey, don't say that. That's uh, 9 and 10, 6 and 12. Yep. You're like, Joey, you son of a... Why'd you have to bring that up? Marcus's forecast, Paladino's predictions. So we'll be getting to those again later. It'll Marcus's will get better. I, he, he promises. He is well. He's perfect with the draft, pretty much the Currys and such, and the versus the Flins. You've been doing a good job in those, but oh yeah, I'm not getting fooled again. You were I'm fooled. not getting fooled again. You were fooled, Marcus. You were fooled. Okay, I didn't say I that. I was. I, I blame you, actually. I know. You Damn sold it. me on Flynn. Oh, you sold me on Flynn. I wish I didn't. Um, I apologize <laughs> for that. Oh, I apologize for that. <laughs> so, yes, two things that we like, two things that we didn't like. Are you ready to rock and roll? Uh-oh, he's doing his ohms over there. But two things that I liked. Would you like me to start? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, please do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, yes, uh, two things I liked. Um, well, to play it, to make it very simple... Uh, I like the play of Ricky Rubio. I mean, I, I, I'm really excited to see his, he's really starting to come back into form again. That is fantastic. Absolutely. Another thing that I liked as well is, well, I have, uh, uh, Greg's team's up still play, I mean, continuing to be feisty and being productive, not being a complete liability like he's been in the past. I've, I've liked his uh, pr- production out there. I've been happy with it, and yeah. He's still only like a 10 to 15 minutes a game guy, but at least he's a factor at times. So uh, anything you'd like to hop in with the two things you like here? Yeah, for me, it's a uh, uh, cool hand Luke. Yes. Um, no longer mm-hmm. a liability with the ball in his hands. At least for uh, shooting. Yeah. yeah, he's playing way more uh, under control mm-hmm. um, lately. 
Yeah, not um, bad. Another guy, Dante Cunningham. Yeah, look at me. She, she, she should have said that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just, <laughs> no, that's okay. His his shooting is a whole lot better. It's a true shot now. Yes. Um, go ahead. Yeah, it just is. I think if we, because he's playing so well, so well if we do, if we don't trade uh, Derek Williams, Dante is getting all the minutes. There's just no mm-hmm. reason to bench Dante. Uh, if he, his defense has gotten better, his picks. Um, I don't know if it's just because we played, you know, the Pelicans. Yep. But the Nolas. Just his his defense is just is great. Quite a find, uh, Cunningham. Yes. And now I guess, and now we know why he wears number thirty three. Do you know what it is? It is. Yes, I guess. Apparently, he liked Patrick Ewing. That was a player he admired growing up. He didn't officially say that's why he wears number thirty three, but I just had to. I mean, the minute I saw that. They said favorite pair growing up, and I said Patrick giving him like that's why he wears number thirty three. It makes perfect sense to me. I mean, you know, my favorite player growing up was Hake- uh, Kareem Ab- or not uh, was uh, Hakeem Olajuwon or something. And I, you know, I've been wearing thirty four my whole career. Well, that that's probably why. You know, you could probably figure fill in the blank with that one. <laughs> uh, I have a forecast and foolery. It was, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> forecast and foolery. Shaquille, come, come on, Javel. Okay, sorry, Javel McGee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky Rubio with the JaVale McGee type layup uh, yes. earlier this week. Was that the Clipper game? What the hell was yeah. that, man? He like <laughs> laid it over the rim. Like kinda, It was like a baseline. He went over the rim. Ah. No excuse. <laughs> Come on, Ricky. Come on, Ricky. No excuse. That was a that was a that was a Shaq and a fool play right there. I mean, what the hell? Yeah. You have anything on that? Or that's that's it. That's got to be it for the week. <laughs> You got oh. that, <laughs> that was really bad. I mean, Come on, Ricky, you oh. can't do that. You can't do that. Come on, Ricky. That was a that was a Wesley Matthews layup. Fuck it, I'm just kidding. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. The layup that went over the backboard. <laughs> I didn't think that was humanly possible, man. <laughs> Forecast and foolery. Okay, sorry. So now we head into league talk. Aren't you excited? So two major stories, just to kind of. Two major stories. First of all, yep, yep. Uh, well, these are probably at the th- uh, top of lots of people's list here. Rajon Rondo tears his ACL. Yes, sir. Rest in peace for the Garnett era of Celtics. 2007 to 2013. The gravestone is has been engraved. It, it, that's, it, it's done. It's Brandon Roy level right here. It's done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Celtics fans, hey, I mean, I've... Boston teams are usually my second favorite teams. New England Patriots, Boston Celtics, Boston Red Sox, and Boston Bruins. Yes, I, I like all the Boston teams. But, yeah, and they're looking at Greg Oden, speaking of guys that are always hurt. <laughs> Fab Mello's on the active list for the first time. And now Sullinger also to undergo back surgery. Yikes. He will miss the remainder of his rookie season due to pending back surgery. Forecaster digging, or, yep, I'll pull this up as quickly as possible. Yeah. That was great that you got that. It's, good. It's, it's probably going to be a fire sale. I mean, yes. that, I yep. mean for those of uh, a lot of people out there thought that, uh, you know, with Rondo being gone, yeah, that they're done. The beginning of the end, yep. Now they're losing uh, uh, Sollinger? Yeah, they can't even trade him now. All these rumors about uh, DeMarcus Cousin trade. Yeah, yep. That's You think that's about it for now, huh? It'd be nice, but yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure Sollinger would be a Seattle Supersonic next year. If uh, DeMarcus Cousin was a Celtic, but I don't know now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, Fab Mello's on the active list for the first time also. That's another you know, thing. And they're meeting with Greg Oden, yes. Uh, that's the Brandon Roy. That's the taller Brandon Roy, who looks like LeBron James a lot. That's why I kept imagining him as a Miami Heat, because he looks like he'd fit right into that team. You know, <laughs> he really does. Ugly. That too. Oh, look like at you, you, you freaking hater. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, the Celtics, It's that's got to be it. Uh, Danny Ainge also talking about, yeah, it's kind of like he's open to pretty much any trade now. Yeah, yeah, he can't. Everybody's on the block. Yep, even, there were, there was like Paul Pierce or Rudy Gay rumors at one point, and a lot of people are like, you can't trade Pierce. But, uh, I mean, sometimes you have to, even, even though he's like the legend of your franchise, sometimes you have to think about it. It's not like they wouldn't retire his number, I would think. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're going to. Yeah. yeah. 
They're not going to say, screw him, he's not retiring here. Yeah, at this point, it's not like, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the fans won't, I'm sure the fans won't like it, but they won't blame uh, the subjects trading him. Yeah, because they know that he's not getting any younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of like, okay, go in, go ahead and get another ring if you can. Wow, and we saw the way he got crossed up earlier in the year on a yeah. Shackin' and a yeah. Fool type of. I mean, yeah. he like he had two left feet in that one. Yep. I mean, oh, that was that was on Shackin' and a Fool for a reason. I mean, he got just humiliated. Yeah, I honestly <laughs> thought that uh, no. the subjects were going to be better than this, especially uh, I Jason too. Terry. I mean, what's going on with him? I did too. Jason Terry really has been a bust of a signing. Courtney Lee also has been a bust of a signing. We basically were like, "Wow, here come the yeah. Celtics." Unfortunately, Lee's stock is going up. Yeah, doggone it. He's playing a little better now, and they they need everything because there's no Rondo. Yeah. Uh, Avery Bradley, who is kind of one of the he's the most confusing player in the league to me, <laughs> practically outside of like Luke Ridenauer. Excuse me. <laughs> I mean, like, what is he? You know, I mean, you just don't. <laughs> Avery Bradley, a point guard, shooting guard, but and they act like he's like, oh my God, you know, Avery Bradley, oh, oh, this guy's so good. He's averaging seven points and four th- and three three assists or something. It's like, eh, seven points a game. Well, he's, I guess he's good. <laughs> kind of like they used to talk about Willie Green that way back in the day with the Philadelphia Sixers. Oh, he's a talented young guy. Willie Green is. I still still don't know what he is. I. Don't know why, and I really don't know why he's even in the league. Honestly, not saying that about Ridnour or Avery Bradley, but I was confused about it back then a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's pretty much nothing that uh, Boston can do to salvage this season. Yeah, it, they're dead. I, it's too bad too. Dar- Garnett's was been playing pretty well. He's uh, yep. There's that deal right there. Yep. Open to any open to trade offers. Uh, Garnett has been playing well, but it doesn't really matter, I guess, does it at this point? Yeah. They were still they still in a losing record. I mean, they're getting hammered by teams. They, didn't they get to... Yeah, I mean, they got... Who did they lose to the other night? It was ridiculous. Or actually, they came back against the... They came back and won. I forget who they were playing now when, when Rondo actually got hurt. Was it Chicago, I believe? They came back and won, but really, eh. It's just one game. A little adrenaline, but... Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Here go the Celtics. Uh <laughs> Off they go into the wide blue yonder. Off they go into the sky. Well, <laughs> basically, yeah, pretty, pretty much now it's, it's just uh, everybody's gonna wait and see where uh, KG and uh, Pierce land. Yeah, it's gonna be strange. Oh, we're gonna have to find out here. Uh oh, look what I've done. Look what I've done. Yeah, but uh, we'll do it to the Rudy Gay trade first, and then we'll do the <laughs> we'll do the weekly awards and demerits for the Timberwolves. We didn't even get to that yet. We're we're so bad, aren't we? We're bad. Uh, so Rudy Gay has been traded to the Toronto Raptors. What do you think? Rudy Gay. Um, well, what yeah, the, the Raptors no. needed a face. Uh, Bar- yeah. Bargiani is not it. No. Definitely not it. Nope. Uh, so, yeah, this uh, gives them a start. It uh, gives them uh, a little bit of the fans something to cheer for. Yeah, they haven't had a franchise player since Vince Carter. Really, it's been a long time. Well, they had Posh, but meh. Meh, you know? Uh, Rudy Gay, yeah, there's their chance. He's he's off to an okay start there. Yeah, yep. They have Kyle Lowry too, and yep. and Demar Derozan. It's a good player. Yeah, and what's his name can play a little bit. Bargnani. He's not that bad, but he's not. He's certainly not a number one pick. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a that's a deep little team there. Dwayne Casey, you know, former Timberwolves coach. There's your chance. You know, there's here's the chance. Here's the opportunity. As for the Grizzlies, I. They're they're like the Detroit Pistons of the Western Conference right now. What are they doing? Yeah, that it, you can tell that was uh, the owner. Yeah, trying to save some money. I guess had nothing to do with uh, winning uh, basketball. No, okay, yeah, I mean they made another really weird trade for was it John Lower of the Cleveland Cavaliers? They traded Wayne Rain Ellington and a couple other pieces. Yeah, yeah, they did it. So they're they're under the cap already. Yeah, it's just what what are they trying to do? Get LeBron James? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember my Miami was like gutting the crap out of their team, but it's like, oh, I get it. They're after LeBron, and yeah. that ended up being exactly what oh, they I, did. I hear Cleveland's after LeBron. 
That's the other thing, yes. Yeah. That's still a possibility. Yeah, but for the Grizzlies, this is, that was just pure, purely a, a salary dump. And that wasn't Big time. winning games at all. Mm-hmm. No. It wasn't winning basketball games. That was salary dump. Yeah, Tayshaun Prince. I mean, I remember uh, the Keelan Kings of the world couldn't wait to get him out of there. because, And understandably, because it's like, and I'm not saying he hated him. It's just, it's like, why is he still here? You know, yeah. he's taking up cap space. Like, why would he <laughs> even resign? Yeah, why Tayshaun why Prince. Resign? Yeah. yeah. That's like what they call loyalty to a fault. Like, yeah, it's just and it's not because the Pistons are bad. It's because it's just he doesn't belong there anymore. They're, they're yeah. going in a different direction. Yeah, you know, they're, they're Drummond in re- rebuild mode. So yeah, yeah, you want Drummond. And, you know, obviously they can't wait to get Stucky out of there. I mean, maybe the yeah, Grizzlies yeah. could take him too. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, stupid. Yeah, I mean the. <laughs> Jose Calderon ended up going to Detroit. I'm sure that we'll be hearing about that on the Rip City Bad Boys, like because apparently Joe Dumars just covered it him for a long time. Really? What do you have, Knight? You know he's not bad. Stucky obviously is like the Stucky's even more annoying than JJ Barea. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that that takes a lot of talent to be more annoying than JJ Barea, but he is takes a lot of bad talent. Yes. Yes. How about them Grizzlies? Uh, well, don't forget the Grizzlies also have a uh, uh, day. Uh, they got that Ed Davis guy. Yeah, yeah, Ed Davis too. And, was uh, a, no. What are you thinking about Con- Mike? Mike? Mike Conley? No. Uh, from the, from the Pistons. Oh yeah, they did Can't get a piece. Think. Yep, we'll get that over here. <laughs> Can't think of his first name. Wow. It's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Is that who you're talking about? Okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's... I should know his name. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those deals where there's just so much... I mean, Actually, Memphis got uh, yeah, I mean, they a got lot of that. Some if, if you don't want to ask too much of Prince, just make make some mid-range shots. Yeah. You know, defend. You're and thinking I about, think he can still do it. Um, you're thinking about John Lahore, man. Okay, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Austin Day. Yeah, they yeah. did get Austin Day. Yeah. Oh, you're thinking. Oh, that's yeah. like you meant Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was kind of like out of the. He was kind of not just not getting used in Detroit yeah, at all. for whatever reason. Just didn't fit. Yeah. Oh, so that's all you're thinking of was yeah. Day. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, I was getting confused for a minute there. Yeah. So they got some players back, some uh, projects. It's not. Yeah. It's not all. Yeah. Not. Not all is completely lost. Really, Ed Davis is the interesting one. Apparently, a lot of people think he might be the guy that could. Someday, I don't know how you feel about this thought, but could someday uh, unseat the great Zebo? Yes, possibly. I think he can come in if he can come in and play a center. You know, he can get back up to either you know in other spots, mm-hmm. four or five. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, he could kind of start out that way and eventually get the bigger and bigger role as time moves on. Yeah, uh, man, you know that makes sense to have Ed Davis in there because this is another thing that's making me feel old a bit. I can't believe Zach Randolph is 31 already. Are you kidding me? He's 31 already. Wow, I, I didn't even realize that. Tony Allen is 31 already, too. Okay, yeah, I'm getting old. Anyhow, <laughs> gee, many Christmas. I thought they were young up-and-comers. You know? Okay, I'm just kidding. No, they're, they're not that young, but I mean, I thought they were just kind of young veterans. I didn't realize how old they were already. That's pretty strange. Um... Yeah, I mean, they got some pieces. It's not like the Grizzlies totally gutted their team, yeah. but they're kind of going like a Minnesota Twins, you know, type of approach where, well, we have this guy he's making a lot of money. Yeah, get him out of here. We'll bring in these prospects, and maybe, uh, you know, this Tory Hunter will turn into, uh, what's his name, De- uh, Denard Spann. And then Denard Spann gets out of and we trade him away for someone else again. And that's kind of what they did here, apparently. Yeah. Guess, well, good luck to them. We'll hope, hope for their case it works out. They got Pondexter, man. Yeah. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> and then Tayshawn Prince is one of those, man, he's, he's 32 already. I still remember when he was a rookie, like, not that long ago. Yeah, weird, weird, weird. Yeah, I think if uh, Prince can come in and shoot consistently, um, I think that's a pretty good deal for them. Depend- you know, considering uh, what they got. Yeah, considering what they got, yeah, it's not like a complete, so it's not like the biggest wash ever, I suppose. Yeah. And they did get Mark Gasold. At one point, the power, everybody thought that was the biggest ripoff ever, and it ended up being actually a pretty good trade for them. So, we'll see. Maybe they'll do it again with the Austin Days and the uh, Ed Davises of the world. We shall see. Yes. So now we will step into the final stuff of the show, the awards. 
Yes, sir. Let's get the awards in here. Lone Wolf, Johnny Flynn Memorial, and we'll conclude with predictions going into next week. Paladino's predictions and Marcus's forecast. You like that? Yes. <laughs> Lone Wolf of the Week. Are you ready? Or would you like me to hop in? I think we're, we're going to agree on this. I do. Yeah? Yeah. Well, go ahead. I'll let you start. Uh, Dante. Oh, okay. Dante Cunningham. Going to go with Dante? He had an awesome... Yeah, yeah. he did. Especially tonight. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, mine's going to be different. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. It's the... Uh, it's number nine. Ricky Rubio will get his first Lone Wolf Award. You're like, what? No, he's kidding. <laughs> Ricky Rubio gets his first Lone Wolf Award because he has rejuvenated the fan base a little bit here. And the team in general. Because he's finally... Coming back to the coming back to the Ricky Rubio that got us all so excited. Yeah, sooner than I thought. I'm thinking next season. Yeah, he's back. He's kind of back. He's not getting two thousand. He's not doing quite as good as Adrian Peterson, like I said earlier, from his ACL injury. But mm-hmm. he's starting to look uh, starting to look like Ricky Rubio again. Yeah. It's really cool. Not like a guy that's kind of like trying to copy Ricky Rubio. <laughs> Johnny Flynn Memorial. That's uh, that could be a, that could be some people. That's a tough one, yeah. a little bit this week. I mean, because some guys played bad, some guys played okay. Ah, mm. uh, you want to give it to Rick Adelman for not playing Chris Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have given it to uh, uh, Lou. Man. Huh? I think I was going to give it to Lou, but he played. Look at you, yeah, Lou <laughs> Yeah, he played. He actually so. played okay tonight. That's the funny part about the whole stinking thing, the whole shebang, as they like to say. Ah, uh, it's a tough one. Ah, uh, I think I gave it to Luke one time. It's time to need to give it to him. Maybe Berea, because he kind of like had a lot of. Uh, yeah, he's he, not, yeah, I'm gonna Berea's give it to not doing as, as much. I'm gonna give it to Berea because this week is just his shot selection just get, really was frustrating, yeah. especially yeah. in the LA game. Yep. It seemed like uh, wow. Luke's, Luke's got better. Mm-hmm. Berea's, Berea, uh, his selection is the worst. Yeah, so it's it's Berea this time. I mean, he had some nice hero ball a couple of weeks ago, and he ended up getting the Lone Wolf Award for Pete's sake. But Johnny Flynn Memorial for me this week. Who's who's your guy? Your Johnny Flynn um, Memorial, the worst player. <laughs> it's got to be. I'm saying Adelman. <laughs> yeah, just, there was just for putting for not playing for not playing uh, Chris Johnson uh-huh. in the uh, in the Clippers game. Yeah, what the hell? We could have used him. And for starting Luke in the Lakers game. Yeah, instead of, uh, yeah, that doesn't look good. You know? Instead of Shred, right? Yeah. Or Jello Ball. Or, yeah, that's the funny <laughs> part. Even Jello Ball, maybe, even though he's slow as uh, as Jello. Yeah, so I, I have to give that to Adelman. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Adelman with his first Johnny Flynn yep. Memorial. Mm-mm-mm. And yes, coaches are eligible for it. It just we uh, we probably won't use it very often, but once in a while for something like that, right? <laughs> so we will close with the predictions. The Portland Jail Blazers? No, they're not that anymore. The Portland Trail Blazers come to Target Center Monday the fourth. Win or loss? Win or loss? They they were playing well. They're starting to lose now again. Yes, yeah, much to Tristan Mayer's chagrin. I say it's a win for us. Do you? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, that'd be it great. depends on the uh, severity of uh, Matthews. Wesley Matthews got injured. Oh, yeah, that's true. If he's playing or not. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the win also. I'm, I'm liking the momentum going in after the blowout over yeah. the Nolans well, Hornets. Yeah, yes. they've, they've got to feel good about this uh, win tonight. Yeah, Rubio's playing well now. And he's been stealing the ball. He helped make us, he, he helped us make a comeback oh, yeah, last week, defense. too. Yeah. He's been stripping the ball loose, the alley-oops. If people actually were catching and finishing alley ups, he'd get more assists than like seven. You know, he'd be getting twelve, like I said earlier. Uh, Spurs come to Minnesota on Wednesday, the sixth. We have a big ass homestand here, but uh, yeah, I'm, thank God for that. Do we win a Do we win a third game in a row against the Spurs um, on ESPN? Huh? Depends on Timmy, Tim Duncan. Yeah, he's got a, like a knee injury, I believe. Yes, yeah, yeah. not sure how serious it is. That makes it kind of tough to predict, yeah. but. Um. Mm. Yeah, always a tough matchup, pain in the butt, but it's a home game. I mean, if it's in San Antonio, it's like lost. Forget it. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even going there. I don't know if that's even a factor anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently, you, Tim Duncan was helped to the locker room. That's not oh, a good. Man. When you hear the word help, that's yeah. not a good thing. Uh huh. Several minutes grabbing his left leg. Well, that didn't sound good. 
and they yeah they beat Washington. What's the excitement? They're saying that it was exciting for them. They're the freaking Spurs. They don't care about beating the Wizards, man. Wizards aren't like an accomplishment to them. Of course, the Wolves didn't beat them for some stinking reason. But <laughs> yeah, Duncan's having a pretty nice Renaissance season. But we have an injury, ladies and gentlemen. And usually, when Duncan gets hurt, it takes a little while. I've noticed that over a long time. But uh, I will go with a victory. Uh, yes. I'm I don't know what I'm doing. A loss. I think you might be win the winner in the, between both of us, but that's if a they, devil's advocate. Yeah, if they get hot, I mean, see what happened last time. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't believe I'm picking a win, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm picking a loss for this like, one. If, even if Duncan's hurt, well, I, I suppose, yeah. Because he's not... They're, they're not the same... Yeah. They're not as dependent on him as they were in the past. No, they're not, yeah. They're so deep. Yep. I should say loss. I should. Okay, I'm going to go with loss. I hate to have to ride coattails so much, but... Because they're just so damn good. I'm, I'm almost going to think loss against Portland, too, but... I, it's because the way the Wolves won tonight and the way Ribio's playing. The next game, maybe we'll get a disagreement. We'll see. Uh, the 8th, Minnesota will play. Will host the New York Knicks. Where, where, do you, where do you go with that one? Oh, that's the Knicks. Uh, I can't... <laughs> yeah? Wolves that's, are going to That's win. the Knicks. We're, 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 we're going to lose this game. <laughs> we're losing that one. I guess the uh, Knicks. I mean, yeah, you would think so. I guess, see, for one of these two, I got to pick a win. I got to pick for one of them, too. I'm going to say the Wolves beat the Knicks this time. Just partially to play devil's advocate. I know you guys see those eyes popping <laughs> up. I know they beat the Kings by like 40 tonight, which I know we're probably going to lose. But I, well, maybe I can help you catch up to me too by going against you. You know what I mean? That way we can keep separating our win loss record a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Charity, <laughs> huh? Charity wins. Oh, but I mean, partially. I mean, we lost by like a millimeter last time, though, in New York. So I mean, I, I don't know. I, I get a sense this team is going to wake up a little bit here, because you know they're finally ha- more healthy now, and they have been playing better outside of that god blank you knew you lay out Laker game. <laughs> so, so you really think that we're going to beat the Knicks, Joey? You can't think that. Yeah, and, and they have Amari back. Ah, uh, who's Amari? Who, who is Amari? He's just a, he's just an injury prone guy, just like Dunk. Okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, I, I I feel good about it. Yes, I feel the Wolves can actually beat the Knicks in, on Friday. I mean, you gotta have a you gotta have one of those upset victories. I'm I'm going with it. Oh, I see those eyes popping. No, I would rather go. I mean, it's possibility. There's more of a possibility. Huge. Uh, not good. I can't even say huge. It's the Spurs. Yeah. Especially if Duncan's hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But you see what the Spurs bench did to uh, the Heat. Yeah. I mean, I, I just got a feeling we're going to beat one of those two, so I'll pick the Knicks. I don't know why. The healthy, but, um, the healthy Knicks team. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well we got to disagree sometimes. We can't always yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 definitely. You yeah, gotta believe yeah. in it, though. Don't do it just to do it. Right. No, no, I do believe it because I think the – I, I like the way that, you know, Dante Cunningham's playing. I like the way Rubio is improving in a big way. I'm very happy with the way that's going. Uh, Pakovic, I got to think, is going to be a, a nice factor like he was last time. Chandler's always a pain in the ass, though. Yeah. But but that was in New York, though. In New York, for the Wolves to play as well as they did, in New York, when Rubio actually stunk big time in that game, I think with Rubio playing a lot better at home, I think the Wolves can do it. Yeah. So, yes, I actually do believe it. I'm not doing it just to do it. I, I just got the... And like I was saying, I think we will win one of these two games, and the Knicks is the choice this time around. Because the Spurs are the worst matchup ever for the Wolves, besides the Lakers. They, like, they like have a mystical spell over them. <laughs> over, the, over the Wolves. So I guess that's where I'm going. I'm going with a 2-1 and one week. You have a 1-2 and two week, right, for the Wolves? So we'll see. I mean, yeah, and it's, it's good to disagree a little bit. Can't ride each other's coattails, yes. And uh, yeah, I do mean it, yes. <laughs> right. uh, watch me, well, hey, you know. We'll I'm see. thinking about the backcourt. Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting deal. So with that, we thank you guys for listening. Uh, contact details, of course. Two zero nine seven three six seven eight seven seven is the phone line. Facebook page, go there, give it a like. Search for Tremol's Explosion on Facebook. And for the Twitter accounts, we both have a Twitter account. What's your Twitter account, Mr. Forecaster? At ForecasterTE. 
That's right. Yes, sir. And mine is at Wolves Explosion. And it's only Wolves Explosion because Timberwolves Explosion does not fit. It's not because that's the name of the show. It's Timberwolves Explosion, but Wolves Explosion is close enough. Yes. Everybody calls us Wolves Explosion. Shame <laughs> on you guys. It must mean you don't listen, damn it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I mean, it's okay to call us Wolves Explosion, too. It's kind of like a nickname, you know? Yeah, like Forecaster is for Marcus. And Paladino is for Joey. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thanks always for listening, guys. Please do tell a friend. Please rate us on iTunes, will you? Rate us on iTunes. We're dying. Come on, rate us, rate us, rate us, rate us. And after you rate us, tell like 15 of your friends to rate us, too. Because uh, we're dying for some more ratings on there. Our, our numbers are better than uh, the iTunes is indicating on yeah, the ratings. It's kind of like, come on, guys. <laughs> Thanks again for listening. We shall be back next week when the Wolves go 2-1. and one. Huh? Yes.